My name is Ananda Shankar Mojumdar. I am a legal editor with Bloomberg BNA's Patent, Trademark, and Copyright Journal. It's one of America's greatest literary figures and one of America's most popular film directors going head to head. It's hard to say why they decided to sue. They, they did seem to think in their arguments that Woody Allen had infringed uh, this uh, Faulkner novel from 1950. The Requiem of a Nun, the book, is not necessarily one of Faulkner's most important or most popular works, but basically it's about a, a woman um, who's, in her youth, there were some very difficult circumstances which she had dealt with, which were the subject of a, another novel, Sanctuary. So this, this novel, Requiem of a Nun, is, is sort of a sequel. The, the Woody Allen movie is about um, somebody in the movie business who is visiting Paris with his fiance, and he sort of goes back in time to the Paris of the 1920s and meets all of his literary heroes. But this particular quotation, which originally was, the past is never dead, it's not even the past, is probably one of his best known lines, and it has been widely used in, in all kinds of circumstances. And one of the more recent prominent uses was in March 2008 when Obama, who was you know, then a U.S. senator running for presidency, he was being hammered in the media over his relationship with Reverend Wright, and he gave the speech. Uh, the speech is still probably one of his best-known speeches. As William Faulkner once wrote, the past isn't dead and buried. In fact, it isn't even past. At one point in the movie, Gil Pender, played by Owen Wilson, discovers that his fiance has been having an affair with another man. And they're having an argument. He breaks out this line from Faulkner, and he says, the past is not dead. Actually, it's not even past. You know who said that? Faulkner. And he was right. And I met him, too. I ran into him at a dinner party. Like every copyright infringement claim, in the complaint, they ask for everything. They ask for damages, they ask for attorney's fees, they ask for an injunction that would have barred further publication of the movie. It, it is theoretically possible, even if a movie has come out, for an injunction to say, this movie cannot be sold anymore, copies cannot be made, cannot be distributed. One of the most famous cases back in the early 20th century was the movie uh, Nosferatu the classic vampire movie, which the owners of the copyright in Bram Stoker's Dracula got an order to destroy all existing copies. Now, some copies did survive, so that's why we can still watch Nosferatu. I think it's pretty clear that the judge in this case, Michael P. Mills, uh, rather enjoyed presiding over, over the situation. And in the very first paragraph of the opinion, he throws in this quip saying that He's glad he wasn't forced to watch Sharknado in order to deliberate on this case. And this is clearly a judge who is not only a fan of literature and art house comedy films, but is also reasonably current on pop culture, considering that the uh, Sci-Fi Channel premiered Sharknado exactly a week before the court's opinion came out. The court said that Woody Allen's use of this quotation was transformative, which is a a key term when, when considering fair use, and, and the court said it was rather obviously transformative. Faulkner's story is this serious, philosophical, somber story about murder and the death penalty and the relationship of the past to the present, and the Woody Allen movie is a comedy, and this line is used in a very different context, and the court said this is diametrically dissimilar, that was, that was the court's words. The way it came out is, is sort of affirms what current understanding and what practice has been for decades, if not centuries. You know, people have always quoted from significant literary works without infringing.